Dave, proud Syracuse alum. This is a tough time for Dave. I mean, it should really be a time also to celebrate Jim Beheim uh, for an unbelievable, legendary career. I grew up in Washington, D.C. I was born in Georgetown Hospital, so I grew up a Hoya, and I did not like the Syracuse orange, okay? Uh, but I always respected Coach Beheim. all the battles he had with Coach Thompson back in the day. Um, Dave, you were just up there to celebrate the national championship team. Tell me what it was like being up there, and did you, I guess, did you have any inkling this was coming? It was the time of my life, one of the greatest weekends uh, I've ever had associated. I mean, Dave, sports. let everybody know that you were part. You were part of that team. Yeah, right? so I, I was a student manager on the 03 team. I was a sophomore that year. Um, so there were two senior managers, and I was one of the junior guys. And um, you know, the job entailed some of the fun stuff, like uh, you know, sometimes in practice groups there could be a guy in a class or a guy's injured and, and you get to throw on a practice uniform and you're, you know, playing defense or throwing passes or sometimes even scrimmaging, uh, but some menial work too, certainly pushing out the water carts. And if somebody slips on the floor, making sure there's a towel to pick up the wet spot of those type of things. But, um, it was, it was a magical season. Obviously they go 30 and five win the championship led by two freshmen, and Carmelo Anthony and Jerry McNamara, um, a few very impactful sophomores as well. Those were the guys I shared the class with, Akeem Warwick, Josh Pace, Billy Edelin, Craig Forth, and um, you know, took care of business, obviously, down in New Orleans. And it's coming up on the 20th anniversary. We won the championship on April 7th, 2003. And for senior day back at the Dome, uh, the Syracuse you know, invited the whole team back for uh, you know a, a watch party on Friday night where we watched the game and everybody's mic'd up and, and telling their recollections of what they saw. And then Saturday night, play Wake Forest. Uh, at halftime, the whole team's recognized on the court. And afterwards, they retired number three for Jerry McNamara, number one for Akeem Warwick. Um, fast forward a couple of days, though. Syracuse plays Wake Forest again in the ACC tournament, uh, loses basically at the buzzer. Wake, Wake hits a, a three to go up three with 0.2 seconds left. And afterwards, you know, of course, at this stage of Jim Beheim's career, 47 years into it and 78 years old, he's got to be asked the question, are you retiring or not? And he said, I already gave my retirement speech. <laughs> and so they says, I mean, you're done. Um, and there's some great reporters at the Post Standard in Syracuse. Uh, Donna and Toto, Mike Waters do a great job covering the team, but they wanted some clarity. And, and Coach Bayheim said, well, that's a question for the university. Um, basically, read between the lines here and, and some of the conversations I had over the weekend with Coach Bayheim included, he wasn't ready to go. Didn't want to walk away. I'm not saying that his intention was to stay on all that much longer, but why not? walk away with uh, a team that gets back into the tournament. You know, I, this year they finished 17 of 14, 10 and 10 in the ACC, certainly signs of promise. Uh, and you know, the conversation I had with Coach Bayham on Friday night was recognizing that, look at some of the better teams in the ACC this year, they hit the transfer portal in the offseason, got some veteran players that could help them right away. And that's what – you know, Beheim and the Orange intended to do. Now, I will say this, uh, Coach Beheim has told me himself that he would like Adrian Autry to be his successor. So as much as I believe Syracuse University bungled this transition, they ultimately ended up with the guy who the guy who's been the guy was endorsing. And, and so you know, that, that makes me feel good about moving into the next era. And Adrian Autry obviously played at Syracuse and been associated with the you know, the university in some form or fashion for about 30 years. But I, like, what are we doing? What are we doing in a world? The guy has a 61 year relationship with the university. He's still Syracuse. If you want to say that, Oh, you know, they're hitting the doldrums or down in the dumps. They're number four in the country in attendance. Number four for a team that was never ranked. Why is that? Hmm, Cause you built a wonderful program. Oh, who built that program? Jim Behai. And so to me, uh, it's a knee-jerk reaction by administration. Uh, it could have been handled so much better. Could have had a conversation 
leading into uh, the ACC tournament, knowing that these type of questions are going to come and say, hey, listen, coach, uh, we intend to have a conversation with you as soon as the season ends. Uh, and uh, if, if both sides feel like the vision lines up, let's do one more year and then we'll announce it once we come to that decision. Yeah, I, I mean, clearly look, that never- didn't happen. You never know what these universities, like the decision making, whether it's the athletic director, the, the, the board of trustees, you know, super powerful alumni. I, I will say this, the Bayheim, uh, the whole Bayheim experience this last couple of days, I'm not ready for it at Michigan State because the next guy now, the longest tenured coach is Tom Izzo. And I call there's a reason why I call him Sparty God. He brought us a national championship. Uh, he can stay as long as he wants in my book. I don't care. I don't care what other people say, like, oh, he refuses to go into the transfer portal. The game is passing by, whatever it may be, which I don't think is true by any regards, because I, I think Michigan State's playing well. Obviously, they, they got the Big Ten tournament on Friday. But, I mean, like, I, I'm not ready to see coaches go and then whatever the next step is. I have had conversations with Spartan players and in the NBA times about it, you know, and, and you know, you always want a younger guy who can handle the, the new landscape of college basketball, the NIL and all that stuff. But – I'm not ready. I do want to ask you, Dave, you got a good Carmelo story that you will probably always remember from uh, from that year. Well, you know, I'll just, first thing comes to mind, just seeing him this weekend and he made it back to Syracuse as well as just about every member of the, the national championship team. A couple guys had some travel issues. Uh, one one guy had a scheduling issue, but everybody made it there and he was 10 toes down on the experience uh, from was it bringing... 10 toes down in the black air force one Tiffany's that he's been promoting. <laughs> okay. Did he wear those? He actually did not wear them. Uh, <laughs> he, he, he was wearing Nikes, but not, but not those. Um, but he not only like, you know, was trying to show a little bit of the guys that tasted the good life that he brought in uh, his wine, his budding uh, wine label, vineyard label uh, for everyone to taste. But you know, there's group dinners. He's taking care of everybody. There's uh, group outings to Marshall Street, which is you know where all the the uh, the watering holes are for for Syracuse. And you know he's making sure everybody's taken care of. Not only on on Friday night, um, but on Saturday night after the game. You know the, the current players they get to feel like kings of the world. They just won the game. They won their senior night, and, and a bunch of the current players come out and. What cooler way to spend a night than have Carmelo Anthony, the greatest player, ever to come through the program, uh, you know, toasting you uh, for your success? So that was really cool. Back in the day, um, you know, what stood out to me was that it's it's not as specific as a memory, but stretch four didn't exist. That was not a position uh, that was uh, prevalent in, in college basketball or in the NBA, and and he kind of created it. And as the season went on, as the coaching staff trusted him more and more. You know, his game expanded beyond the three-point line. You didn't see six foot nine guys uh, with handles uh, shooting it out there uh, yeah. like Carmelo did. So, obviously, it portended a tremendous career. Um, very cool moment from him during the watch party. Kwek Dwayne was the lone senior on that championship team. And let's remember, Carmelo played in the league for 19 seasons. He played on various Olympic teams. Olympic mellow, right? He told Kwek in front of all of his peers, in front of an audience of hundreds, you're the greatest captain I ever played with. I mean, wow. how what a great compliment to pay for a guy who's played alongside Jason Kidd, who's played alongside Kobe Bryant, who's played alongside LeBron James, and on and on and on. Um, that moment uh, stood out. And, um, you know, on the reverse side, you have Jim Beheim basically telling Quet Duaney, you were one of the hardest players I've ever had to coach. I had to, I had to coach you hard and try to get you to play hard. Um, uh, anyway, it was just a tremendous weekend, and you know, I, I recognize that everything has to come to an end. You know, Tom Cruise once said, endings are never nice, otherwise they wouldn't be endings. And so I get it, but um, w- what are you losing you know, if he was to coach another year? Adrian Autry was behind the plan. Uh, he, he, he was ready and prepared to be there when the transition makes everybody feel good about it, but we move on, and I, I just love the outpouring of support that that the guy has received. Um, you know, if you're focusing on the last four seasons where he doesn't have 20 wins or more, mind you, in those four seasons, he did make a Sweet 16 run. Uh, you're totally missing the point. 
totally missing the point. How about 35 tournament appearances? How about five Final Fours? How about the championship? How about 47 NBA players in his 47 years running the program at, at Syracuse? Um, and, and just the, the, the great family appeal of it, not only coaching his sons, but he coaches Leo Routens, who ends up being an NBA player and now an announcer with the Toronto Raptors. Then he coaches his son, Andy Routens. And Andy Routens stars on one of the greatest Syracuse teams ever, probably the best team in my lifetime uh of you know since i enrolled in school in 2001 other than the championship team uh that team led by west johnson and renzi Aku and andy routes was you know best team in the country they ran into butler um yeah. so you know i could talk about this all day but i think we probably have some nba stuff to talk about yeah i mean look i i will always remember sherman douglas Derek coleman I hated the matchup zone still do uh you know michigan state faced him in the tournament a few years ago I despise every second of that game because of the matchup zone. Uh, Syracuse won, and Tom Izzo should have used Jaron Jackson Jr. to block a few more shots, but that's another thing. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.